Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Easy Like Sunday Morning podcast. Thank you for that intro. I appreciate that. We're going to turn that off right there before we get hit with a copyright license infringement. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Like Sunday Morning podcast. I am your host, Charles Watson. I hope you guys have been having a incredible weekend. I'm just going to kind of get situated here, get all comfy. Hope your weekends have been great. Our weekend has been awesome. Uh, We kicked off Friday night with the Kitchen Killers. I hope you guys caught their show. Always a pleasure to hear them. Always a pleasure to uh, listen to them play. And here we are, Sunday. And this is a chock full podcast session today. Good morning, guys. Let me just get separated, uh, situated here. Uh, Anthony, good morning. Christian, good morning. Tia, good morning. Uh, Tia will be fielding any questions, comments, or info in the comments below. She'll also keep me on point and on task. We have a lot to cover this week. I am excited. This week, we are discussing the topic, taking massive action. Uh, over the last couple weeks here on the Easy Like Sunday Morning podcast, we have been talking how everyone has a message to share. There are people out there that want to hear your message. This is a great way in this age to share your information uh, when I uh, with the public and actually make passive income uh, to supplement your full-time job. Maybe you want to go part-time. Maybe you want to spend more time with your family. Maybe you want to start a family. Maybe you want, you know, to buy a new car, a new house, whatever your reason. Uh, we grew up hearing everyone tell us that we are living in the information age and information is of age. And now that information is valuable. And that's kind of where we're at right now. That's kind of where we're living at right now. The uh, inspiration for today's podcast is coming out of the book, The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk. And it is also coming out of a video lecture series called Experts Academy by Brendan Bouchard. And basically, we're going to be talking about taking massive action, why wanting to do something is not enough. Uh, Having an idea is not enough. You actually have to act on that. And the best way and the best time to act on that is now. Everybody got their cup of coffee? I got mine. Let's uh, let's buckle in. Do you like the new set dressing? That's nice. Threw a tablecloth there on that table. Some light up willow trees. It's cute. Tia's idea. She's the cute one. All right, so uh, let me pull up some notes here and let's get started. So I think before we talk about taking massive action, I think we need to look at why people don't take massive action. And I think the number one issue that inhibits people and the number one factor in preventing you from uh, taking action, putting up that tutorial video on YouTube, Uh, starting that new business idea that you have uh, on Facebook, creating that Facebook page is because of self-doubt. I think uh, for many people, the feelings of self-doubt and that fear of getting things wrong continues to cripple and continues to undermine uh, their ability to turn their thoughts into action. And I think we live in a society today where it, that that's kind of is is perpetrated um especially with with social media i wrote down social media perpetrates this on a on a daily basis in the forms of uh peer pressure fear of rejection fear of trolls uh fear of not being good enough uh these are limiting beliefs that i think each of us have to overcome uh, i know i certainly have uh when i started cosplaying um i really didn't know what to do, you know, so I had to go seek that knowledge out. When we started a YouTube channel, I had no idea. I really didn't even watch a lot of YouTube, to be honest with you. So uh, I knew that I needed to find that knowledge and I knew that we needed to go seek that out. 
And so, I mean, I think the fear of failure is uh, not only our biggest crippling factor, but I think that we've been programmed to look at failure uh, kind of the wrong way. You know, failure to me is uh, one of our biggest teachers. If you do something and you fail, then you know that that didn't work. And if you take a step back and you look at the larger picture and you kind of remove your emotions from the situation, failure can be a really great teacher. Failure can teach you what went wrong. It can help you come up with new strategies. It can help you come up with a new plan of action. And so I think that our biggest teacher is, uh, is failure. When we fail, we learn, we adjust we grow and we move forward. And with that, I mean, everyone loves success. Everybody is pushing for success. Success is absolutely the end goal. But I mean, let's get real here for a second. Success is just positive reinforcement of, of what's already been a good decision. You know that that works because it's positive. You know, you're growing your brand, you're getting more followers, um, you're selling <clears throat> more paintings. Uh, it's, it's just a successful reinforcement of what's actually going on. Um, so I'm having some problems looking at the, uh, the comments. They're kind of grayed out. Uh, no budget, no budget expense left behind. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's continue. Thank you, Christian, for that. So let's, uh, let's continue. Um, success, your success should be judged on results and not necessarily the process, you know? So the process of learning how to record, the process of learning how to edit videos, the process of learning how to write uh, an ebook, a product, this, the process of recording your first video, uploading that to YouTube, that's where you have real opportunity to learn um, and success uh, shouldn't necessarily be judged on that process. That's full of trial and error. Of course, it's not going to work. The first couple live videos that I did, you couldn't even hear me. Uh, I bought the microphone. I couldn't understand why the microphone didn't work. I went out. I researched that. I realized that the microphone needed a uh, an amplifier and needed an electric plugged in amplifier so that it could provide power and boost the signal. I went out. I bought one. We conquered that. And now we're here doing uh now we're here doing live videos and you guys can actually can actually hear me holding good morning, so it should be measured by results, not necessarily the process. We're all going to fail, but what is the end result? If the end result is successful, then you know that the decision you made, the path you chose, was successful as well. So how do we get into this mindset? How do we get into the mindset of releasing our self doubt? How do we get into the mindset of really not caring what other people think, uh, understanding that this hope is a process and that there are going to be trials and errors and that you learn uh, through your failures. And I think there's a couple of ways that, that you can learn. You know, you can teach your brain to say yes when self-doubt and the, feel of the fear of failure is actually holding you back. And the first way that you can overcome fear and self-doubt is you can build your problem-solving muscles. You know, I mean, you, you can just build your problem solving skills it, it, and the point, I have five points that I'm going to share with these problems. And point number one for this is that if you want to become an expert, you need to become an expert. You need to do it. Um, you have to fill yourself full of confidence. You have to get those skills. You know, you can be a research and reporting expert. That means you can interview others that are successful in your niche. Uh, a good example of this is the author Napoleon Hill, who wrote the book uh, Think and Grow Rich. He didn't really necessarily have the skills that he wrote the book on, but he went out and he talked to tons of experts in that industry, the finance industry, the self-help industry, the success industry. And he researched from gurus and from pros and stuff. And then he took that knowledge, he digested it, and then he restructured it and wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. And to this day, that's one of the most successful books ever written. I think Think and Grow Rich and uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People have been selling millions of copies since like the 1930s. So it's like the 1930s, like dudes, kids, kids are making money off of that book. So <laughs> go out, be the expert. That's one way 
you can overcome self-doubt. Uh, number two, we touched on, and that's get comfortable with failure. You know, practice a growth mindset by teaching your brain and teaching yourself that failure is just simply part of the learning process. There's absolutely nothing to be uh, to feel ashamed about. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. We are all failing some of the time. The only question is whether we grow from these mistakes or do we preoccupy ourselves and become so busy trying to cover our mistakes up, sweeping them under the rug or, or blaming others, having that victim mindset. You know, I think that when you fail, you need to own your failures. You need to talk about what you learned from the experience. Failures are just opportunity in, in hiding. Um, I hope you guys are getting value from this. Uh, Anthony says he's an expert at Facebook memes. I, the world needs more memes, Anthony, and some of the ones that you share are incredibly funny, so I'm going to agree with you. And you provide an invaluable service for those of us that go through our dull drum days looking for that laugh. If you're not following Anthony Hernandez or 8-Bit Fusion Graphics, you need to so you can get your daily dose of meme expert inspiration as well. He's owning it, and that's awesome. <laughs> But you got to get comfortable with failure. Remember, it's a learning process. Don't play the victim. Don't victimize others. It was your decision. You're the one that ultimately decided to pull the trigger. You got to live with the consequences. Learn something from it. Pick yourself up. Move forward. I hate to be the ego crusher, but we've all been there. You're not feeling anything out of the ordinary. You're not feeling what you're feeling is, is called human emotion. All human beings possess it. Um, so just pick yourself up, suck it up. And uh, like they used to say back in the day, suck it up, get over it because all that's doing is inhibiting you from moving forward at a faster, at a faster rate. Uh, there's a great quote that I want to share with you guys by Cheryl Sandberg. And that's, she says, done is better than perfect. And that's an incredible quote because I do think that the fear of being perfect paralyzes us as creators, paralyzes us as business people, paralyzes us as um, influencers. We are so concerned over what people are going to think that we wait to be perfect and there's never a really a perfect time. I mean, is there ever a perfect time to start a family? Is there ever a perfect time to buy a house? Is there ever a perfect time to go to the grocery store? No, there's not. You know what I mean? So don't wait for perfect. Get it done. Learn. Move on. And then the third way that you can get over the fear of self-doubt and uh, the victim mindset, paralyzing mindset, is to rally the support of others. And that's why we always talk about building a supportive community making deep connections with people, connecting on a, an emotional, spiritual level with your audience, offering value, enriching the lives of others. Because in your tough times and in your times of need, your community will be there to lift you up. And I see this all the time in the cosplay community. And this is one of the things that I really like is that whenever we have a friend that's down and they express that, it's just really great to see friends and really great to see people just rally to someone's cause and, uh, and, and just lift them up and help them out. We all have bad days. Everyone's entitled to a bad day. The trick is to get more good days in than bad ones. That's really the trick. So there we go. So there's some ways to overcome self-doubt. Uh, those are over some ways to, to overcome uh, crippling fear that will help you take massive action, will help you uh, make that video, will help you write that book, will help you put your art in that gallery, will help you uh, grow your business as a exquisite wine bar in Melbourne. <laughs> All right. So the next couple of things that I want to go over is I want to go over uh, the difference of successful people versus unsuccessful people. Like what are a couple qualities that successful people possess? You know, the ones that seem like, man, they're always hitting a home run. They're always knocking out of the park, no matter what that guy does or what that guy touches turns to gold, you know? Um, 
Anthony's dropping dope memes and I'm trying to get a hundred uh, followers on my video and I can't even do that. Like what separates successful people from unsuccessful people? Christian, I can't read your comment. It's kind of grayed out. Oh, that's what wonderful. That's what's wonderful in our community. I'd say our convention family looks out for each other. Absolutely. And that's super important. Building those communities and building that strong support system is definitely important. All right. So here we go. Five points, five differences of successful people versus unsuccessful people. And I just briefly touched on number one, and that is remember, if you want to become an expert, if you want to become an artist, if you want to become a businessman, you really have to become those things. Um, you can do research and reporting. You can be a results expert. Uh, you've gotten some great results from things that you've tried, um, from trying what are the best practices in your niche. As an artist, what are best practice techniques? As a businessman and a wine connoisseur, what are some best practices in your niche? By practicing these things, you actually gain authority and credibility and, uh, and helps you overcome that personal fear. And the third way um, you can become an expert is, is be a role model. And I always tout this, remember, work ethically, add real value to people's lives, help them with problems, help them with questions, get engaged in your community, um, and just be a role model. Set a good example and always conduct yourself and your business with integrity. Remember the wise words of Jay-Z, I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. We are all businesses, we are all brands. The moment you made a social media account, you became one, whether you realize that or not. You have a message, whatever that message is, could be bomb ass memes, could be wine review, could be a radio show, whatever it is, when you created that platform, to spread a message with friends, family, and a community, you became an influencer and you became a brand and you became an expert in the material that you're sharing. So you always want to conduct yourself in a professional manner. And that really separates people, successful people from unsuccessful people. The second thing that separates successful people from unsuccessful people is they successful people know what their work is. They know what their mission is, they know what their message is, and they know what they wanna bring and share with the world. They know their four Ps. And this is talking more towards businesses and talking more towards brands. Uh, first P is position. They know how to position themselves as an authority. They do position themselves as an authority. You need to position yourself as an authority as well. Uh, they know packaging, they know that and provide content in a way that their followers can follow them from point A to point B. So we're talking about maybe uh, drawing classes, we're talking about uh, reviewing comics in a series, walking your customer from point A to point B if you want to market a uh, uh, a comic book series. So real experts and successful people know their information, they know their position, that they are an authority, and they know how to package their message, they know how to package their products, where it really brings their visitors and their customers on a journey and guides them from point A from point B. And the third one is promoting they're actually adding value. They are out there actively campaigning their message. They're getting their message out there. They're not spamming, but you have to make what content in your niche is shareable. You know, like check out other people in your, check out other people in, in your niche and see what they're doing. Like what, what are people sharing of theirs? What is catching on? What awesome memes are people actually sharing? What uh, artwork style is actually catching on fire right now. And then you take that and you add value in those topics and that creates a campaign and makes shareable content. You want to make sure that your content is shareable and that people are engaging in it uh, most definitely. So promoting and then the last one is partnering and that is finding others in your niche 
that will help promote your message further to a wider audience. And this is super important as well. Um, hang on. Somebody's telling me to log in. I don't know what the heck happened. All right. I hope this is still live. I don't know why it looks like I, I was getting kicked out of Facebook. Let me uh, cancel this here. All right, let's continue. Sorry about that. So you wanna partner with other people. Here at Dishes and Stitches, one thing that we did is that we partnered with uh, Oh My Sophie because I know that she does classes and she does courses and stuff on social media marketing. And I know that I wanted to share that information. She had great tips with our audience. So I reached out to her before Megacon Tampa Bay. I went ahead and reached out to her and asked her if we could collaborate on a video project. Uh, of course, she said yes, because our brands are in line. We're both cosplayers. We're both in marketing. We both want to help other people grow their brand um, and, and, and take their message to a, to a wider audience. So we, we paired up and... Um, and we shot a video and that was great. And then I shared the video and then she shared the video to her audience. I put some money behind the video and launched an ad campaign. And with that, we really got our message out and we were really able to grow our audience some. So I think we got like 30 new followers off of that campaign, that video campaign. So that was awesome. So um, partnering with other influencers in your niche, you know, that's great. There's always somebody that knows more than you in, on a topic and you should definitely seek those people out and you should uh, try to work with those people. So, all right, so that's all under <laughs> the, if you wanna become an expert, become an expert. Those are all ways that you can become an expert, you can show authority and you can gain credibility in your niche in order to take massive action. The second way um, you can overcome self-doubt is have a successful mindset. Fill your mind with successful things. Fill your mind with positive vibes, less negative things, maybe less news in the morning, maybe less negative comments in the morning. That might even mean taking a break from social media in the morning if it's negative. Um, you want to be what they call in psychology the cause cause. Oh, the causal agent. And that is uh, feeling a sense of high ability to control your destiny and affect your results in life. And I think that's one thing is that you really got to take control of your life. John, good morning. You really got to take control and you really got to tell yourself that you are in control of your own destiny. You're going to dictate the rights of your own life and you're going to live life on your terms and you're going to be happy and you're going to be, you're going to be successful. Um, you know, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't have a website. I don't have the right camera. I don't have a good microphone. These are all victim excuses. This is all a victim mindset. You know what, when we first started, we didn't have a good camera. We didn't have the microphone. Um, I have spent thousands of dollars on training and courses to learn how to do this and build my brand and I know that not everybody can afford that, so I want to pass this message forward, you know, but we, we weren't experts when we first started, but T and I, we decided, decided that this was something that we wanted to do, and we're, we're doing it. We've reached out. We've invested the time. We've invested the money. We've invested the effort to learn the skills that we need, and now it's growing for us, and now it's working, and we are starting to see the fruits of our labors pay off, so don't take that victim mindset have a successful mindset i think it's uh tony robbins that say says it's not about resources it's about resourcefulness how resourceful can you be with the tools and everything you have available to you and i think that's what it is oh and i think i can't read the comments because i'm not logged in i think that's what's going on all right we'll worry about that later. I will get to all your comments. If you have some, um, I will get to them after the video. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And then I think the last one of having a successful mindset is that you really got to get rid of the 
ask and you shall receive attitude. You really got to get rid of the ask. I'm entitled. Um, I deserve this. I don't know why people aren't supporting me. Uh, my message is awesome. My brand is great. My store is uh, the bomb. I think you got to get rid of that mindset where you are the hero of your story. I know that we've talked about this over and over again, and it's really, really important. Uh, Donald Miller in, in the book, Building Your Story Brand, really hits it home. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. Building Your Story Brand, it's down in the show notes, along with all the other inspirational stuff um, that we have. Hang on. I'm getting. Oh, anyway, that's uh, sorry about that. All right. I thought something was wrong. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> you know, get out there, learn the skills that you need and, and, and things like that. You know, and then the other thing is, is you want to have a high performance mindset. You know, you want to make sure that you realize that this day is meaningful and significant. And, you know, today is either going to keep you where you're at in life or today is going to advance you towards your goals. Today is going to advance you towards where you want to be in life. And I think that's important. Make the most of every day. Um, don't just sit there wishing for it. You actively have to pursue it. It is a lot of work, you know. Um, master your thoughts feed your mind with positive things motivational things successful things avoid negative situations thoughts and people and get yourself in a routine get in a routine make your bed in the morning meditate exercise engage your community any routine that helps you move your you forward and your mission forward is good start getting rid of the negative, start getting rid of the negative people, start getting rid of those negative influences and start filling them with more positive things. I have a devotional book in the, uh, in the bathroom and in the mornings when I wake up before I get ready for work. It's a three minute devotion, positive thinking, getting you in the right mindset. I grab it off the uh, toilet shelf there. And I, I read three minutes of a devotional and I'm ready to start my day. So fill your stuff Fill yourself with positive influences and, uh, and positive feedback. And then the last thing that separates positive people from unsuccessful people is that positive people, uh, they, they make this journey, they make this experience, they make um, their brand and their business part of their identity. Uh, they're proud of their expertise. They're proud to be driven and passionate about their message. Uh, the, they practice what they preach. They stay congruent and serve others. Like they don't spread a positive message on Facebook and then when the camera's off, they you know, know absolutely nothing and, and treat everybody like crap and stuff like that. You really gotta be congruent. You really gotta be, uh, you really gotta be practicing what you preach. Uh, don't be egotistical. Nobody likes a know-it-all, you know, but be vibrant and be passionate about your message. Live it, be it, do it. That's why I always used to say, uh, go forward, do good, and be awesome. And I think that's a credo that I, you know, should, should bring back, and it's true. Go forward, do good, be awesome. You have to see yourself and be passionate about your subject. Uh, it's a long road, you know, you definitely got to know your why, why you're doing this. You definitely have to be passionate about why you're doing it because there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. There's going to be days when everything is going right. And then there's going to be days when you just want to throw in the towel and tell yourself, Hey, why am I even bothering? Why do I even bother uh, doing this? Nobody cares. Nobody's listening. And again, that's just playing the victim. So be passionate, pick something that you like. Pick a message that you're passionate about to get you through the good times and the rough times. And guys, that is it. We had some engagement this week on my personal Facebook page. I asked some questions. Uh, you can go back through my profile and find, find those. Uh, the first question is, what frustrates you the most? Uh, believe it or not, majority of people said uh, money and time. Those were the two most frustrating time factors. Uh, the second question was, what are you trying to accomplish this year or next year? And we didn't have anyone with some outrageous goals. 
Uh, everybody had really attainable goals. Uh, get their their radio show back up and running. Uh, finish a couple projects. Uh, uh, other people wanted to position themselves in a better position to crush it next year. So we had some some really good goals. Nothing out of the ordinary or anything. So that was great. Um, then I asked the question, what do you think you would need to double your business or happiness? Uh, a lot of people, time and money were probably the two deciding and, and biggest answers there. And then finally, the one that got the most engagement and got an incredible response from a good friend of mine, uh, Chris, who actually builds brands and does marketing uh, professionally. Uh, that question was, what strategies have you tried uh, to improve your business that worked or did not work for you and he had a really great response and I think that that response was so great um, that I want to do a separate video on that topic and I think I'm actually gonna reach out to Chris and see if we can do an interview and I can bring him on the show or throw him on our YouTube channel so that he can share uh, what he shared with with uh, on the page he could share live with you guys is chock full of information about developing a plan about strategies that you need with sub strategies how to keep track of everything it was incredibly helpful so if you're serious about this taking action please go find that thread i always put the questions they have real obnoxious background colors on them because i like to call attention to them but find the one what strategies have you tried to improve uh, your business, what's working and what's not. I highly recommend that read for everyone. Um, and that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me this Sunday. All inspiration for the Easy Like Sunday Morning podcast comes from my book club. These are books that I have read or I have listened to uh, on Audible at the request, not really request, but the Commodore from Kitchen Killers turned me on to Audible. I am not endorsed by Audible. I am semi-endorsed by Kitchen Killers, so listen to them and uh, you know check them out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They do originals and cover songs. They're awesome. Uh, but that's it, guys. Thank you so much for uh, for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment thread below. I will get to you. Check out my books, click on the links. I recommend all of them. And if you purchase anything from my links, a, we get a small commission from Amazon. It helps us keep the lights on, do crazy flowery willow light up trees and stuff like that. Just helps us bring more content to you guys. Thanks for checking us out and tune in nine o'clock next Sunday for another Easy Like Sunday Morning podcast. Once again, my name is Charles Watson, and I will see you next week.